Dr. Rizwana, working as a professor of physics in the Institute of Aeronautical Engineering. So today we are going to do some numericals based on Eng's double slit experiment. Already uh, in my previous videos I have uh, discussed about Eng's double slit experiment and this experiment it is related to very important phenomena exhibited by light and that phenomena it is called as interference. So in Eng's double slit experiment, what Eng's has done, he has taken a single source of light and light from that single source, he made it pass through two slits and these two slits, they are kept very close to the source and these two slits, they are separated by a distance small d and then we kept one screen from these two slits at a distance of capital D. So here, what we'll observe here is, from this point source S, we'll have spherical wavefront coming out. And when this spherical wavefront goes and falls on these two slits, then there will be division of wavefront. So division of wavefront takes place and the spherical wavefront, it gets divided into two parts. And these two wavefronts, they are coming from the single source S, but they are getting divided into two parts by making them go through these two slits which are kept very close to the source. So that's why what we'll observe here is now S1 and S2 they'll act as virtual coherent sources. So here why we are calling them as virtual coherent sources because whatever wavefronts we are getting from S1 and S2 because they are coming from the same source and we know that wavefront coming from single source they can only be in phase with each other or they can be coherent. Whereas if I take two different sources, S1 and S2, so these are different actual sources. And if I consider wavefront coming from these two sources, what you will observe here is these two wavefront coming from two different normal sources, they can never be in phase with each other. So if they are not in phase with each other, then it is not possible to get interference pattern on the screen. We know what is interference. Interference is where we are superimposing two or more light waves. And this superimposition, it is dependent upon light waves being in phase as well as out of phase. If they are in phase, it will give right, gives rise to bright fringe. And if they are out of phase, it will give rise to dark fringe. So in order to get interference pattern on the screen, and if you want these wavefronts uh, to give rise to beautiful uh, fringes on the screen, then they have to be in phase with each other. So that's why what Eng's has done. He has taken a single source, and he has divided wavefront into two parts from that source by making them pass through two slits. So that's why they are called as virtual coherent sources. Now, so using this Eng's double slit experiment, first we are going to do some problems. Like uh, uh, here we talk about, of course, uh, different uh, maximum intensity and minimum intensity recorded on the screen. So minimum intensity, these are nothing but bright fringes and uh, sorry, maximum intensity, they are bright fringes and minimum intensity, they are uh, dark fringes. So in terms of maximum and minimum intensity coming from these two coherent sources, we are going to do some numericals now. Now coming to this first numerical, as we can see here, here we are given two coherent sources. So here we are talking about uh, our uh, two virtual coherent sources S1 and S2. So here we are given two coherent sources and here we are given intensity, uh, intensities uh, that is coming out from those two sources. Suppose from first source uh, intensity of light is 10 watt per meter square. And from another source, suppose this is from source S1 and from another source, here we have our intensity to be 25 watt per meter square. Now, if these two intensities are undergoing interference and we are able to get fringes on the screen, so we need to find what is the ratio of maximum intensity to minimum intensity. So, in order to solve that problem, first of all, what we are going to do, we'll take our intensity to be square of amplitude. So, intensity I is nothing but square of amplitude. So, by using this, we'll try to get ratio of maximum intensity to minimum intensity. Suppose intensity that is coming from first source S1, let me call it as I1. And similarly, intensity coming from second source S2. That is our, these are two are virtual coherent sources. Let us call it as I2. And we know that intensity is proportional to square of amplitude. So I1, it will give rise to A1 square and I2 will be U2 square. So if I take ratio of these intensities, I1 and I2, I'll have it as A1 square by A2, uh, A2 square. And we know intensity from these two sources. One is 10 watt per 
per meter square another one is 25 watt per meter square so this ratio it will become 10 by 25 so if i solve it it is approximately 0 0.6324 so our amplitude of first intensity wave amplitude of first wave coming from the first source it is equal to 0 0.63 t4 times the amplitude of the wave that is coming from the second source now we need to find ratio of maximum intensity to minimum intensity and we know that when we'll get maximum intensity in order to get maximum intensity or in order to have constructive interference crust of one wave should fall on crust of another wave trough of another wave it should fall on trough of another wave so it means that their intensities will be added up or their amplitude of waves will be added up so that's why in order to get maximum intensity we are writing this maximum intensity as a1 plus a2 whole square and minimum intensity minimum intensity will observe that crust of one wave falls on trough of another wave so cancellation of intensity takes place so that's why when we are representing minimum intensity in terms of amplitude so we can write it as a1 minus a2 whole square now what we are going to do we are going to replace this a1 in terms of a2 we know what is a1 in terms of a2 a1 is equal to 0 0.6324 times a2 and when we substitute here a2 will get cancelled and if we simplify it our ratio of maximum intensity to minimum intensity comes out to be 19.729 so moving further going to second numerical here also we have two virtual coherent sources whose intensity ratios are given so i1 is to i2 is given so what is the ratio of i1 is to i2 so it is given as 36 is to 1 so these are the ratios of two intensities which are undergoing interference or which are forming interference fringes again we need to find ratio of their maximum intensity to minimum intensity so here when we are talking about i1 is to i2 we can write in terms of their amplitude as a1 square is to a2 square this is equal to 36.1 and if i want to represent it in terms of ratio of their amplitude so a1 is to a1 is to a2 it is equal to 6 is to 1 so here now uh, of course we know that um, what is maximum intensity and what is minimum intensity so maximum intensity is nothing but sum of uh, amplitudes of in individual waves square of sum of amplitudes of individual waves and coming to minimum intensity difference of amplitudes of individual waves so when we are talking about minimum intensity so it will be a1 minus a2 whole square and here of course here we are taking ratio so in this case so a1 minus a2 i can write it as 6 minus 1 whole square which is equal to 25 and when we talk about maximum intensity which is a1 plus a2 whole square so 6 plus 1 whole square which is equal to 49 and ultimately in the end ratio of maximum to minimum intensity will be 49 is to 25 which is approximately equal to 2 is to 1 so this 49 we can take approximately to be 50 so that's why we are our ratio it comes out to be approximately equal to 2 is to 1 then next here also we were given uh, so just a previous case we were given intensity ratio here also we were given intensity ratio but approach is different in last case directly we have taken amplitude so here in this case here also the same way but we'll try to uh, express amplitude of one wave in terms of amplitude of another wave so here also we were given uh, two coherent sources whose intensity ratio is 81 is to 1 and these uh, two co these two intensities they are producing interference fringes again we need to find ratio of maximum to minimum intensity and here we are making use of this concept of intensity being represented as square of amplitude. So ratio of intensity is I1 by I2. So it is equal to A1 square by A2 square. And we know that ratio is 81. So it is equal to 81 is to 1. And if I take square root, then I'll have A1 by A2 as 9 by 1. So here we can uh, express A1 as 9 times A2. So when we try to calculate ratio of maximum to minimum intensity, so maximum intensity is A1 plus A2 whole square and minimum intensity is A1 minus A2 whole square. And if I substitute in place of A1 as 9 of A2, and if we simplify, so approximately it comes out to be 25 by 16. Then going for next problem here in this case it is completely different from problems which we have discussed before. Here I have two sinusoidal waves 
uh, which are having equal amplitudes and their amplitudes are 1 by 4th of wavelength of phase. So here, uh, whatever waves which are interfering, we are saying that they don't have different amplitudes, but they have same amplitudes. And how their amplitude is represented here, we are saying that amplitude is 1 4th of wavelength of phase. Then we need to find what is the amplitude of resultant wave because of superposition of these two equal amplitudes. And we know that uh, when these uh, waves are superimposed, and if these, if when I have two waves whose displacements are given as, uh, for suppose I'm talking about displacement of first wave. If displacement of first wave, it is given as y1 is equal to sine omega t and displacement of second wave, it is given as sine omega t plus phi. Then we have seen that resultant intensity because of superposition of these two waves, it has come to be i is equal to, and of course here both these uh, uh, waves, they are of same displacement a. So, in that case, we got our intensity as 4a square cos square phi by 2, where a is amplitude of each wave and 5 is phase difference between these two waves undergoing interference. So, here, as you can see, when we have two waves of equal amplitude, but they are having different phase and if they superimpose and if they give rise to interference pattern, then resultant intensity it is given like this. And from this, if I want to write the resultant amplitude, we know that intensity is proportional to square of amplitude. So once we know intensity, how we can am find amplitude, we have to take square root of this, which comes out to be 2a cos phi by 2, where phi is the phase difference. Now. Uh, what is given here? Here we are given that uh, these two waves, they are having part difference of one fourth of wavelength of phase. So it means that lambda by four. So our part difference is lambda by four. So we know relation between part difference and phase difference. So here you will observe that phase difference phi, it is two pi by lambda times the Part difference and what is the part difference we got here lambda by 4. So, part difference between these two waves interfering at one particular point on the screen. So, it is given as lambda by 4. It is expressed in terms of wavelength and ultimately our phase it comes out to be pi by 2 and this phase value we are going to substitute in this expression for amplitude. So, which is 2a times cos of of course, 5 by 2. So, what is our 5 pi by 2? So, it will become pi by 4. And we know that cos of pi by 4 is 1 by root 2. If we simplify, then our resultant amplitude, it comes out to be a by square root of 2. Then coming to our last problem on n's double slit intensity numerical problems. So, here we are given two coherent sources. And here we are saying that when we take ratio of their intensity, it is denoted by one particular term alpha. So here we have, uh, of course, uh, two coherent sources of intensity ratio alpha when they interfere. Now we need to show that uh, ratio of, as we can see in the numerator, we have I maximum, maximum intensity minus minimum intensity divided by in the denom denominator we have maximum intensity plus minimum intensity and this particular ratio it has to be 2 times square root of alpha divided by 1 plus alpha. What is alpha? Alpha is intensity ratio of those two coherent sources. Now for that again what we'll do first we'll try to find what is the ratio of intensities that are coming from those two coherent sources. I1 is intensity coming from first coherent source. I2 is intensity of wave that is coming from second coherent source. And if we represent them in terms of amplitude, so I1 is A1 square, I2 is A2 square. And here already what is given in our problem, their intensity ratio, it is equal to alpha. So this particular value, it has to be equal to alpha. And from this, if I try to find what is the ratio of their amplitude, then we end up having it as square root of alpha. Then we can represent our A1 as square root of alpha times amplitude of the second wave. Then after that, I think we know what is maximum intensity and what is minimum intensity in terms of amplitude. So maximum intensity, we can write it as A1 plus A2 whole square and minimum intensity as A1 minus A2 whole square. And if I substitute in this particular ratio, which is asked in our problem, which is I maximum minus I minimum by I maximum plus I minimum, 
which is a1 plus a2 whole square minus of a1 minus a2 whole square divided by a1 plus a2 whole square plus a1 minus a2 whole square. If we do it, so of course, if when we simplify using simple a plus b whole square or a minus b whole square, then we end up having it as 4 a1 a2 divided by 2 times a1 square plus a2 square. And here I'm dividing both numerator and denominator with a2 square, then I end up having as 4 a1 by a2 divided by 2 times a1 by a2 whole square plus 1 and already we know what is the value of a1 by a2 it is square root of alpha if we substitute then we end up having same right hand side as it was asked to prove in our problem so these are uh, some of the problems based on uh, intensity ratios you know, like ratio of maximum intensity to minimum intensity which we have done in terms of ratio of their amplitudes so with this i'm going to end my session here thank you like, share and subscribe, hit the bell icon for more updates.